Um, morning, 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 everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, I'm just going to do a bit of an introduction. We very much have a... Sorry. Hello. <laughs> yes, uh, thanks. Um, it's very much going to be a pre-recorded service today, so a little bit of intros and so forth are going to go hand in hand, but um, for now I'm just going to introduce our intro song and the kids' song as they arrive. Um, we have Blessed Be Your Name as the introductory uh, our praises today, um, followed up with My Lighthouse for the kids' songs to play, so um, the team, media team will take us through those. Thank you very much for your attention. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to church. It's awesome to be here together. Let's just start by singing, Blessed Be Your Name. Thank you. 
call the children up for family worship. And uh, this morning we've got a new song. It's called My Light House. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Let's sing My Light House. Yes, uh, welcome church. Um, yeah, apologies. I forgot to mention the reason why we don't, we're not doing um, our what is it? <laughs> worship team here is of course of uh, long weekend commitments. Um, so we don't have all of them available to do that live. So that's the reason why we have that. Um, but yes, uh, welcome everybody um, to our service today. Um, we have a, yeah, a good attendance today, so thank you for that. Um, so, yes, first and foremost, um, I have a, 
two first-time visitors with us here, and I'd like to mention them. We've got, I think, Charles and Tanya Owen. Um, please raise your hands. We'll give you... There we have. Somebody's going to give you a cup, and then you're free after service to, well, um, to join us at the Welcome Corner and get yourself free cappuccino, the best in Hillcrest, I promise you. Um, and then we also have Porsche, uh, Porsche Litzolo. Please raise your hand. Ah, there they are. Yes. Uh, cappuccino Cup is also following you for the best coffee, cappuccino in Hillcrest. Um, and if there's anybody that we missed is also here for the first time, please also raise your hand. Mwah. No, there's nobody today, but thank you guys. Um, so in August, it's Comrades uh, Marathon. Keep that in mind. And another good announcement. as well. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I think with that we can end tight. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, let's pray for the offerings. Lord, um, your gifts are bound. Your gifts save, restore, and nourish. Today we share with you our bountiful gifts to further your giving, saving, and nourishing power of your word, teaching, and guidance. Lord, it is not how much or how little those gifts are, but it is their value that our hearts see in them. Let, them ve let that value guide their use in your name as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Um, now, the pre-recorded worship team will continue to worship with us with um, Glory of Our King as the first song. The second song will be King of Kings and then followed by Amazing Grace. So please, let's enjoy. Thank you. As we go into a time of worship this morning, I just want to read from Psalm 100. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Go into His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And His faithfulness continues to each generation. Let's worship.
that you have called us to be your hands and feet on this earth, that you call us as a church, as a, as a body, to spread your word and your light to the world. And so, Father God, we just thank you that you've given us this, this great commission and you've given us strength and you, we can stand on your promises and we can stand on your word as we go out to the world. And Father God, I just pray that you would give us this courage and we would draw on your strength. We thank you that we can bring all glory and honor to your powerful name. King of all the earth, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord Jesus. Just do. 
for the power that's in your name, for the promises that you've given us, and for your unconditional love. We love you, Lord, and we worship you. Please be seated. I'm actually a hologram. <laughs> I'm not really here. Unless you clap and applaud and say amen. amen. Oh, well, there we are. Well, I am here then, and so are you. Oh, yes. I've come for my daily, weekly, my weekly pedicure. Blessed are the feet of those who bring good news. Amen? Before I start with my prepared sermon today, I have to tell you about meeting three angels. Lillian and I met three angels yesterday. Wouldn't you like to know who they are? We've been to town. We're in Lillian's car. I'm not allowed to drive Lillian's car. Nobody's allowed to drive Lillian's car. <laughs> and as we were coming... Uh, underneath Cowies Hill, in between Cowies Hill and the nature reserve, suddenly, <laughs> front tire <laughs> shredded, blown out. We're now, and I've read that it's a bit of a dodgy area, that if you're in that area, sometimes uh, villains come out from the bush and then relieve you of uh, some of your possessions. So I was a bit nervous about that. Plus, we were going home, and Liverpool were kicking off at one o'clock. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the stress was on me, brother. The stress was on me. And I was really aware of this. Anyway, I, we opened up, and Lily took the triangle out, and we fixed that thing, and I sent her up the road in the dangerous part <laughs> to put the triangle out by the bin, you know. Um, and then I did the thing, you know, I pulled it out, rolled it forward, but I, I suddenly realized everything seems to be getting heavier these days, you know, and then a, a, a backy pulled in front of me, I, I wonder, what's this, I've got a, a double grip on the wheel spanner, you know, and two African Zulu men got out of the car, one was rotund, one was very young, and the returned one said to me, Kulu, Kulu, oh, can we help you? Oh, can we help you? And the young man was saying, Gogo, Gogo, don't stand in the road, come off the road, it's dangerous. They got down, the guy gets in with the wheel spanner, puts this thing up, winds it all up, takes it all off, and I give him the spare. But the Mercedes has a peculiar thing. The wheel rim is shallower than the wheel rim on the normal car. Don't ask me why. Probably that's why it costs more, you know. And the bolts that you've got on the wheel don't fit the bolts that go into the spare. Hello. Madam's had the same car for 14 years. We'd never checked this out. There was one bolt Somehow the other four had gone. And this guy said, well, okay, Kulu Kulu, we need to take this, car, this wheel with a shredded tire and your spur to the nearest garage where we can get them to put that tire on this wheel and bring it back. And I said, okay, okay. He didn't ask for any money or anything. So I said, no, uh, Baba, please, you've got to take some money. You're going to have to get there. You're going to have to pay for this. So we did. And off they went. Of course, the thoughts come into your mind. Is, the last, is that the last I'm going to see of my tire, my good tire, and my 200 bucks or whatever it was? And we were waiting. And once again, the worries come in. We're here on our own. We're vulnerable, you know. And then another backy comes up. Now the first guys, I've got to tell you, they were from the Courier Guy. They worked for a company called the Courier Guy. It was on their van. Next guy pulls up, and 
he is a, a white guy. His name is Stephen Morgans. He's about six foot something or other. And he runs his own IT company called Codecraft. But on weekends and times, he volunteers to join a group called MobiClaw 911. And he just saw where we were and came to stand by us to make sure that we were okay. He asked the questions. He looked very skeptic about this believing Christian that had gave two tires and a, uh, 200 bucks to two strangers, you know. And lo and behold, the Makula Kulama guy, they came back, beep, 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 and pulled up, fixed everything up, and I, I just was overwhelmed. The stories in South Africa we hear, but this happened to us, beautiful people, South African people, who are looking out for people. And it was overwhelming. So, yeah. God is good, hey? God is good. And so today, let us hear what the Lord has to say to us. John chapter 21, verse 15 to 19. And this is after Jesus has been resurrected and he appears again to the disciples when they're fishing. And it's a time for Jesus to speak to Peter, the disciple, that had promised, I'll never leave you or forsake you, Lord. And so Jesus says, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, Son of God, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him for the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you, want to, where you do not want to go. It's amazing that, um, well, not amazing, sometimes a different version of the Bible has a word or two that's different. And in the Bible I prepared with, this Bible's got big print because my eyes are getting smaller and they're not so good. But in the Bible I prepared with, when Jesus asked Peter the questions, the first two times he said, Peter, Simon, do you truly love me? And the second time he said, Simon, do you truly love me? And only on the third time did he say, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And then in that particular version, um, it was my, in my study Bible, it pointed these differences out to me. And so this morning scripture it tells us this story of the restoration of Peter. And as I prayed for God's word for us this morning, this word restoration came to mind. The Oxford Dictionary says, to put something back to its original place or condition. And I think that's how we all understand the word restoration. We think of works of art being restored to their former glory. Or ancient buildings, castles being restored to their original form. And a while ago in the news, quite a while ago, there was a company 
which had restored a valuable painting and that company was being sued for millions because the owner of the Dutch um, masterpiece, this oil painting, received the painting back and he noticed something. He noticed that the work, when it was returned, wasn't exactly the same. The man in the, the, the uh, painting, one of the men in the painting had a beard. Now he didn't. Another man in the painting um, had hair, but now he was bald. <laughs> that was cruel, wasn't it? Eh? <laughs> and so he realized these things and horrified the owner of the painting took it to be analysed and to be x-rayed. Whereupon they found that the restorer had used too much cleaning solvent to clean the grime, the, the centuries of grime off the painting. And therefore, he actually had rubbed away some of the original painting. Thereafter, to make matters worse, he decided that he was going to restore the painting and paint it himself. Uh, but unfortunately, he didn't get the images right. The beard came on and the hair went off in different places. I mean, I'd end up looking like Bob and Bob would end up looking like me if that happened to us, you know. The character, the expression, the whole impetus of the painting was lost. It was different. And in this case, the restorer was wrongly named because, as you recall, the meaning of the word to restore is to return or bring back to the original condition. And therefore, a genuine restorer would avoid damaging the original or changing the original format. And he would use original materials as used by the original artist. Not only would the restorer use the same materials as the master artist, but the restorer would endeavor to paint the same, in the same style as the original artist. Not so? It therefore becomes very obvious as to who would be the best person to genuinely restore that work of art. It is, of course, the original artist. And as I thought on these things, I was reminded that we were all made in the image of God, by God, who is the creator of all things. And just like works of art, we have become covered in grime over time. We really have. And as it is so with these things, it's little by little, by little, by little, it happens over time. As the time of our lives go by, we've become tarnished. We have lost our brightness. We are, and we have lost our exuberance of expression the way the Creator wanted it to be. In fact, some of us have allowed a completely different image to be painted across our lives. Which of us can truly say, I am a reflection of the image of God? Which is exactly what we should be able to say, because God made us in his own image. But as we are exposed to the word of God, the Holy Spirit begins to show us how far we've changed from what God wanted us to be. It is through the word of God that we're able to see how God's creation was meant to be. And it is therefore through the word of God that we're able to see how far we've been spiritually disfigured. I have a, a memory of something that happened and an awareness long before I come back to the church, in the 70s, um, I had sufficient money 
uh, because my children hadn't grown up so far and hadn't taken it all. And I used to get my clothing from bachelors. I don't know if anybody remembers bachelors in West Walk. It was the place to go if you were a cool dude in the 1970s. And Clem was the guy that used to serve me there. And uh, when I was going in for it, because in those days we wore suits, I was selling typewriters to Afrikaans Macy's, and you had to wear a suit. And the IBM guys wore a suit, and the FBI guys wore a suit. And everybody that was, no matter how hot it was, you wore a suit, collar, and tie. And when I was going for a new suit, I used to put on a suit and the sh shoes, the type of shoes, so they could measure the thing, see how it looked. And I thought I was quite cool. I thought I was, you know, the lad. And of course, I'd go in and tell Clem I wanted this, that, this, and then the other. And he would sort it all out. But then something happened. I'd go back into the changing room and I'd put on my old suit. And I'd look in the mirror. And I realized what a scruffy so-and-so I was. <laughs> what I thought, and the wor I thought of myself, but I'd had the new suit on, and I'd seen what it should look like. And now, I was putting the old suit back on. You know where I'm going with this. You know where I'm going with this. The Word of God is the new suit. The Word of God reminds us how good we can be. The, the Word of God reminds us how wonderful our Heavenly Father thinks of us, thinks about us. But we keep putting on and stalling and keeping hold of the old suit. In many cases, the first steps to restoration start when we lose control of some part of our life perhaps through illness. Often at such times, we see clearly what is real and God-given. I know most of us here have experienced some life-threatening illness. Well, there's a whole lot of stuff that suddenly becomes superfluous and you start to realize what the really important things are in life. What is real and God-given and what is just a false facade only when the per perfection of God and his will is revealed to us can the process of restoration begin. It is at this point we have to make a vital decision. Do we go to an agent of God who claims to have heard God's revelation for the restoration of mankind? Or do we go to God's son Jesus who is the word of God? Who is the word of God? Do we go to Jesus, who is the Word of God? To Jesus, through whom all things were created. For the Holy Spirit guided the Apostle John to write, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. That's straightforward. There's no beating about the bush. That's who Jesus is, the Word of God. In the beginning, God spoke, and what the God spoke became. I don't know about you, but I'm turning to Jesus for my restoration. I'm going to Jesus, who was even able to restore himself to eternal life after physical death on the cross. I'm going to Jesus because Jesus cares about me. He cares that I'm a poor reflection of what his Father wants me to be. In fact, he cares so much that he was prepared to become a mortal man so that he could show us the way back to his Father's glory. Listen once again to how he restored the disciple, Peter, to himself and therefore to his Father. You remember from the story of Christ's passion and crucifixion how when he needed his disciples most they deserted him. Peter was a strong character 
And he had said to Jesus, I will never desert you. And for a while, it looked as if Peter might keep his word. After all, he followed Jesus into the courtyard of his captors, into the enemy's camp. But when he was called upon to stand up for Jesus, he could only respond, I do not know that man. In fact, he went on to deny Jesus three times. It is at this point that we start to understand holy Jesus, uh, uh, to understand how holy Jesus restored Peter and therefore how holy Jesus restores us. Holy and holy. <laughs> They're intertwined, aren't they? Because for every denial from Peter, Jesus gives him forgiveness and restoration. And there are no coincidences in the Bible, in God's Word, as it is for us today. Peter sinned three times, denied three times, and he was restored three times. With the following question, which at first glance they look the same, but in fact they're not the same. That is, two are the same, but the third one is different. The question, the first and the second question were, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? And the third question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? The difference in the first two, the word truly is added to the words love me. This is an attempt by the English translators from the original Greek text to show the difference as written by John. The fuller understanding of the two types of love which John writes of is this. The first, truly love me, refers to love in which the entire personality, including the will, is involved. Whereas in the second, love refers to a spontaneous natural affection in which every emotion plays, um, e which even emotion plays a more prominent role than will. There was no doubt that Peter loved Jesus as a disciple, but when faced with the captors and the guards of Jesus, although the love for Jesus was there, the will to show that love disappeared. And to me, this is one of the millions of signs in the Bible which show me that God cares for every specific person in a specific way. Look at the way Jesus restored Peter from the person God put to, uh, to the person God intended him to be. He restored him to be not only Peter who loved Jesus, but Peter who had the will to love Jesus the will to love Jesus even more than the fear of his own death. And so from that point on, we read of Peter performing miracles just like Jesus. We hear of Peter speaking boldly about the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. We hear of Peter speaking about who Jesus really was. Peter told all who would listen that Jesus was the Son of God who would restore all who called upon his name to eternal life. In fact, Peter was restored to the image of God so that he had the will to love Jesus, even surrendering his own life upon the cross. And so, once again, the question has to be asked, what about us? No doubt, we too love Jesus but no doubt, just like Peter, we lose the will to show our love for Jesus when challenged. Perhaps we lose our will to alcohol. Or we lose our will to selfishness. Or to anger or impatience. There are so many things that overpower our love and our will to love Jesus. Yes, we do love him but have we the will to show it? Have we the will to overcome the things that stop us showing our love for Jesus? 
Jesus is asking you and I today, do you truly love me? Do you truly love me? And if, like Peter, we can say from the bottom of our hearts, Lord, you know all things, you know that I love you, then we will be restored. But full restoration is a process. A process that takes place when we return to the process that created all things. We will be fully restored by day, day by day, when we're washed by the Word of God. When we are washed by Jesus. When we read the Word each and every day of our lives, for all things were created by God's Word, and therefore all things can be restored by God's Word. That's when our new restored life starts reaching starts reaching us. It's by reading God's holy word in a Bible day by day. And when we do, we'll show Jesus that we truly love him. And we've been given the God-given will to love him. That's when we receive his call. And that's when we will be given life in abundance. That's when we will, wit- we will hear Jesus speak. And Jesus is asking us here today, do you truly love me? Then feed my sheep. With what shall we feed them, Lord? With the bread of life, which is the word of God. But dear friends, the question is, Do we truly love Jesus enough? Do we have the will to read his word every day so that we may share what we've received and in so doing feed his sheep? Dear friends, restoration starts with us and is only completed when we can truly say, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Dearly loved of God, Do you want to be fully restored to Jesus? Then if you do, you need to ask him. For he is the word of God through which all things were made. He's able to restore you into the image of God. The image that God intended you to be. And so now let us ask Jesus to restore our lives in a manner, in a moment of prayer, It's a time to call upon the name of Jesus and be saved. To call upon the name of Jesus and be restored in the sight of God God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ our Saviour, come Holy Spirit, come. Come and wash over us today. And let all, Lord, who call upon your name be restored. Let all who call upon your name be restored in their family relationships. Let all who call upon your name be restored and healed both physically and emotionally. Let all who call upon your name have their finances restored. Heavenly Father, let all who have been abused and put down be restored to full dignity so that everyone will know that they are within your loving grace and power and that they carry the dignity of you in their spiritual DNA. Thank you for your word this morning, Father. May it be personal, 
may it be fulfilling and may we be restored in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you.
in the truth, the truth, the truth. Waymaker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who you are, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. If you're needing prayer, please go to the prayer room just to the left, my left by the bookshelf. If you want to come and pray at the foot of the cross, come and hold on to the cross. Come and pray. If you want the oil of healing, come and we will anoint you with oil. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship, friendship, and love of the Holy Spirit go with you now, this day, and forevermore. Amen.